What's up guys, it's Brent LeBlanc, back with another look development guide. Today we're going to be using Substance Designer to make filters for Painter for this desert rock scene. Let's get started. For this tutorial, I'm going to start a series that I'm working with TDU, uh, Mike and Jasmine, who I worked with previously. They're running a like an education website, so you can check them out here. I'm going to be working on this set. So this set was modeled by Denyan Oyang, uh, and this concept right here was done by Noah Bradley, and uh, this concept of this house was done by Lip Comarella. So you guys can check those guys out, and I'll uh, put a link in the description. All right, so this little desert rock here. So I'm going to start trying to build an artboard for this. So it looks like, all right, so just kind of standard rock material. So. Let's go into Google and start building up this artboard here. All right, so this would be like our close-up reference, some of the medium shapes, big shapes here. All right, so now I got Substance Designer open here. I'm just gonna load my, uh, my rock mesh. All right, so I just loaded my rock mesh and I'm just gonna drag it. And this is just a little start setup that I have. So I can start messing with stuff. All right, so let's look at this reference again. So I think the first thing that I want to do is try to make these big shapes and try to uh, put these these big shapes into a filter that I can use in Painter, not entirely build it in here. Uh, just build like signals and controls that I can use to build the rest of this stuff from the medium to the high frequency. That way in Painter I can do some uh, unique rocks and stuff like that. Full disclosure, my designer skills are really lacking. There is a, an array of people that I should make shout out to that are really good for this. So me, I just usually stumble around in here. So I'm using this clouds uh, and a blur and a levels, and I'm using it as the, the warp input for this uh, gradient uh, radial that I have here. I'm just trying to discover uh, some different ways that I'm going to get that shape. So this uh, creased uh, signal here seemed like it would be like a good kind of uh, overall shape breakup for the medium sh shapes and then uh, use it in that warp to kind of change its direction uh, to get that kind of uh, medium frequency and it seemed to, to work pretty well for that uh, first layer. I just got to run a slow blur through it and kind of break up that edge and chip it. And from here, I'm just kind of floundering around trying to find uh, different shapes and how to uh, mix them together to get the signal that I wanted. All right, that's kind of an interesting, kind of interesting shape. Let's try to use a slope blur. So the slope blur is going to uh, add that kind of irregular choppiness. Uh, that off rock often has. So I'm just messing with the intensity and uh, things like that to get there. Again, just messing around with the different blend modes and or the different modes and stuff like that. Always working on height first. Everything else comes afterward. Blur this just a little bit. All right, kind of got like a, a the big rocky shapes. I'm gonna clean this up a little bit. If you click on a node and you hit D it kind of um, nests it inside of the other node. That way you can be a little more organized. You can always access it by hitting D again or just clicking straight on there. And if you hold Alt and left click on a node, it will uh, show up in your 2D view. So it's a good idea to kind of stay, keep everything pretty clean at a frame. Now let's work on this kind of stratification layer stripes shift that so it's flat mm. that could be an issue i might have to relay out the uvs but let's see if we can get away with it because i kind of want them going this way try this hmm. never seen this one warp angle input Ooh, very cool I've never used this one before, but this looks pretty interesting. 
All right, so it has a warp angle input and an intensity input. So you could put different stuff in there. So I guess I could use a cloud noise for the intensity if I wanted. All right, let me do a, a flood fill. All right, so where this flood fill works is that you need to, to have an end because I want to do a random grayscale for each one of these things so they can go in and out. So what we need to do is take these stripes and then uh, cut it out with this polygon like uh, by multiplying it. Uh, that way that it uh, cuts out the, the stripes from going on forever. We run them through this flood fill so that it can identify uh, each stripe individually so that we can run it through to the flood fill to a random color uh, so that we can uh, use that to run different randomizing uh, operations. So now what I'm just doing is taking that flood fill to random and then just restretching it. And then we can run it through our uh, warp uh, so that we can get some of that stratification uh, going on. All right. So now we're going to take that result, put it into the height to kind of see where it's going. And you can see that it's uh, not directly going in the right direction that we want on all the sides. So what I'll do, end up doing at the end is I'm going to put this into its own control and then we'll be able to send it over to Painter and then do like a triplanar so that we can get it to go evenly all the way around the tile. So now the next thing I want to do is I'm going to add some of these, these dots in kind of a higher frequency. Uh, detail and maybe add in some of these uh, cracks and things like that too. But first, let's try to get these little dots here. All right, so I'm gonna make like a tile sampler. Now the reason I don't use the the regular inputs in here uh, is because if you do a pattern input, you can modify this later in your graph. It's just a little easier to modify and uh, put new inputs in there. So that's just why I do that. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to uh, take these uh, different shape inputs, put, in, put them into the sampler, and then uh, start messing around with the offsets of them, and then just putting it into the height so I can uh, preview it. And then I'm just messing with the scale random, the position random, and just go in there and like mess around with different settings to uh, just you know get uh, variation in your sampler. So one of the things that I don't want to do is like get too much into the weeds about do this, do that, hit this setting, hit that setting, and just give you like a re an idea of what I'm doing here so you can kind of build up your own uh, workflow. But what I did here is I just took those, those medium frequency dots and I just duplicated them and made a smaller frequency version just so that I have two sizes to work with. All right, so now that we got that, I'm going to do a multi-switch grayscale. It will do three inputs. So we'll do the big shapes first stratification second then these little dots last so i think we need to make one more input for those cracks oh, this non-uniform what is that new one multi-directional warp interesting try that I like these new nodes i haven't even messed with I, I don't even know if this one's new but i've never used it so now what i'm going to do is just use that directional scratches put it through this multi-directional uh warp and then uh, use that gaja noise to drive uh the uh, position offset for it. And I'm just, you know, trying to get that, the shape of um, jagged uh, cracks that you would get into like a rock face or something. All right, so one thing I'll do is, now that I'm kind of happy with these four signals that I've got going, cracks, the dots, stratification, and kind of these bigger shapes here. What I can do now is start making a few handles um, for each one of these so that I can control them and paint it a little more intuitively. Okay, so let's make another frame for this so we remember. Now I want to change the uh, scale of these cracks with a uh, handle and painter. So I'm going to go to expose, change it to new, and just name it whatever you want. Double click on the graph here and it'll show up my input parameters. Now I just want to go in and set uh, my default value, my min value, and my max value. So I decided about 16 is probably the, the most that I'd ever need, so I just left it at that. And then uh, now I'm testing the parameter to see that it's working right. Uh, so this is the slider that I would see in Painter. All right, I think we can get some pretty interesting stuff out of that. 
All right, so that's the first one. Go back to our multi switch. So I'm just going to go through the process of authoring the rest of the uh, handles so that we don't have to watch that whole process. It's just the same thing over and over. All right, now we're going to export our parameters here and we're going to make the filter so we can use it in Painter. All right, first thing we, we want to do is we want to import our filter. So I'll go to my shelf, import resource, and then rock signal filter here. And I'm just going to do this in current session for now because I don't know if I'm going to go and change it later. There's our filter there. All right, so I'm just going to go through the library here and look for a like base rock that we could use. All right, let's do all of our bakes. I just have it off over here. I'm just going to bake the world space, ambient occlusion, curvature, position, thickness. And we'll just start with 1024. That's fine. Use low as high. And I'm just going to use default uh, settings. All right, so now we got all of our bakes done. Most of my menus are over off screen. I'll bring them over if I need to show you anything. All right, so let's take a look at what kind of color palette I'm going for. Probably something like this, actually. Bring over our properties here. One thing I want to do is I want to turn on the new displacement. So, and I'm going to turn off AO. Let's see. All right, it's on. Scale. It's 0.01. And also increases subdivision count. Try 20 to start. Try to get that local color. Then I'm going to increase the scale. That's a good starting point for the base. So let's make a fill. And I'm going to have heightened color. Add a black mask. Add another fill. All right, so I have my uh, rock filter here. And I'm going to just put that into my uniform grayscale. Go back to my fill here and let's just turn off color. I'm just going to start increasing the height scale. Get rid of that seam. Try planner. Yeah, that's probably. So I'm just adding an anchor uh, to this big shape rock. If I ever change the scale of this, it'll automatically update in here. Add a fill. And I'm going to look for this rock big shapes. Have this at negative one. Levels. Height. Invert. That way it's going in and out instead of just going out or just going in. All right, so now if I change the size, they'll both change together. Now what I can do is add the disp out. One trick to get rid of uh, displacement seams like that is you can add a generator right here, UV border, and then I'll multiply and invert it. What that does it just takes away, if we turn that off, you can see it's pinching. Put this into a folder, disp all. Add a black mask, a white mask. And I'll do the generator. All right, so now, so now I'm just going to try to mask that edge so that that height doesn't bleed over and be really obvious that there's a seam there. First, I'm going to add a filter to warp that edge. This here is just an intensity multiplier to, you know, basically just gives you a factor of 10 uh, for intensity. So it recalibrates the slider. I'm just going to increase the blur amount for the source, which is basically when you're in um, in designer, when you're using like a, like a noise uh, to warp a shape. That's kind of the same thing. It just has a noise built in. You can also do a custom noise here. I'm going to do that a little bit. And I'm going to blur this. I think that's working. One thing I'm going to do, kind of break up this very even in out signal and just add a fill here. Try this clouds. Now we got like a little interesting shape happening here. I want to change the color. So I'm just going to re reference my rock filters, big shapes here. I'm just going to add a layer and add HSL and set the um, under base color. I'm going to set the amount or the uh, type to pass through. So I had to make, since this is in a folder, I had to set the folder type to pass through as well. Give a darken, add a black mask, add a fill in there. I'm going to reference my big shapes here that I made earlier. I'll actually try a different strategy here. Let me try to lighten it. There's a line here that I don't really like, so I'm going to actually reference my curvature or thickness. 
uh, I'm actually, what I'm going to do is how this is like daisy chained together. I'm going to uh, add a filter down here then a fill, turn it off. Let's call this curvature. That way I can control the curvature uh, separately, actually, so I can see the mask easily. So I just tur turned off its contribution because this is just going to be used as an anchor system. I'm going to grab the, let's try thickness first. Because I'm using a triplanar, I'm getting that weird edge. So I'm trying to malt out that a little bit. Uh, let's see. All right, so why I didn't use it directly is because I want to re-level it. Also do a blur. All right, so now it's actually not doing anything yet. So I want to add a anchor point, curvature anchor. Put it at the bottom of the stack so that I know. Now you can see this little weird edge here because of the triplanar. We got rid of that where there's a seam a little bit. Fill, curvature anchor, just before it gets to that edge. Now it does a little better job. That way, when I'm finished with this, I can use it as a smart material. A little smooth on the edges, but it's better than like some huge egregious thing. And we'll do some other blending and stuff to get that to work a little better. Now I'm gonna work on the stratification. You can see on these lower areas is kind of where it's showing up. Add a fill in here. And just as practice, I'm gonna start doing all of my different signals at the bottom here. Fill, that way I can reference them back at the top. All right, so I got my strata anchor. Let's move that to the strata area. And let's do triplanar. So these ones are okay. This top one, here's the control, CTL, call this, and okay, so we got strata rand, random, strata control. Now we can reference those however we want, and then the scales will move together, which is exactly what we want. So let's go here, add a black mask, a fill. Now we can reference our strata control. Or our strata random. So let's actually use the strata random first. I don't even know if I use the control, we'll see. Add this one. Because this top layer really shouldn't have the strata because it's cutting through like this. Let's try, ah, world space, that'll work. Okay, we're gonna do two. I need to nest my world space normals inside of the layer. I'm gonna copy this layer. Black mask, paste. Invert. Okay, so first I have this signal. Cut out this part with this strata height. So I want this little sandwich to be all the strata. Cut it out like that, flipped it. Now it's only happening on the side of the rock. Hope that makes sense. Uh, let me just warp this signal a little bit. All right, sweet. All right, so another thing that I see that's going on here is that it's kind of cutting in and out. So I'm gonna use these bigger shapes, cut out that part, add a fill, and I'm just gonna leave this strata height one clean and then just modify from here now. Click this fill and I'm going to reference my rock big shapes. And then I'm gonna multiply that. Now what I can do is, I'm gonna make an anchor for this. Now what I can do is use this anchor to drive color information, gradient. I'm gonna add a fill, add a rand mask, gradient. Let's do, I also want to warp this strata a little bit. What I want to do is I want to warp this with a custom noise and I'm going to use the rock big shapes as the driver. Custom noise. The thing I want to do is I want to add little dots to this gradient. So let me make, make another fill under the gradient to add linear black and white spots. 
All right, so let's start adding in those little pock marks. So I'm just going to create, I'm just going to duplicate this layer. And I think that's the only control that has basically just on. And we can just reclamp that later. Okay, so, so far we've got strata, big shape. So now let's make those pocks. Let's do height for now. Add a black mask, fill, and we want to anchor pock control. And I'm just going to break up the repetitiveness of that. Now I'm going to add a filter in here, HSL, set the layer to pass through. I'm just going to add an anchor, pock, mask, fill, modify this roughness a bit, blur it a bit, probably the strata as well. You know what, I'm going to use strata mask, cut out some of these pocks. My guess is a lot of these pock marks happen from like bubbling. This is totally a guess. Let me just save this because I haven't saved it the whole time I've been doing this. I'm just going to add one more layer on top of roughness breakup. I think what I can do, base color. So I'm just, what I did here was I just taking, I just made an empty layer uh, and I'm just referencing the color. When I did, when it's normal, it's blank. I did pass through it's going to gather all the color layers and put them into this layer then I just turned it off and then I'm just sampling it and then I'm using it to just kind of redrive some of my roughness I'm going to use that as the the base and then I'm going to run some noises through it as well Turn on shadows. All right, this rock is starting to shape up a bit. I think I need to get some more intensity in some of those colors. Cre increase that HSL. All right, one thing I want to do is just add an overall roughness breakup. Black and white spots. I just want to get some spec interest. I want to get a little bit of sun bleaching on the top. So let's do a fill, or I mean a layer, add a filter, pass through, brighten that. What do is mask this, generator, white. Just gonna mask this by those cavities. To rock big shapes, apply. For this color, so that the dark areas are in the cavities. I feel like in the strata areas, there needs to be a bit more roughness spec. Pull it at the top here. Black mask, fill, strata, rand masked. I want to try to imply that there's there's minerals in there or something. All right, and then I'm going to add a fill. Try right, gradient flakes. You usually use that same mask to drive a little HSV shift. I feel like I'm just missing some like really intense hits. Look for a good pattern here. I really want to add some of those, that really high frequency stuff. So let's revisit that other strata that I had down here. Big shape, medium frequency. And I still need to use these cracks, so we'll do that next. I need these to be separate for this one. Then I want to add it back on top. mask cut out some of those areas still a bit repetitive 
Now let's add in uh, some cracks. All right, for this one, we want the last one. Okay, let's add a filter in there. I want to warp this by the big shape. And then I'm going to add a slope blur, which now is in here, which is so cool from designer. Now I'm just using that slope to uh, break up the cracks so they're a little more irregular. Now I don't want this to get uh, too noisy, so I'm going to take those uh, that cracked signal and try to break it up a little bit. I'm going to have a little bit of... All right, now I want to add dirt. So now that I've spent all that time making this, save this to my library. So now that I got this rock, I can throw it onto um, other objects and it should work out pretty well using all those procedural techniques to cut those corners and the height and all that stuff. Uh, so now some cool stuff that we can do. Get this mud. All right, let's desert quality. All right, so now what I'm going to do, one of the cool new features of this new release of 2019, uh, 0.1.0 is compare masks add mask with height combination so what it's doing is it's evaluating this mud and it's evaluating the desert rock that I made all the height information it's filling in the areas of cavity based on uh, these parameters up here so if I do within tolerance I can change the tolerance see it eat away don't really want it to do that though I want it to be either on or off so I want to do greater than so any areas where this dirt is a greater distance and height uh, from the cavities it will push or it will push out in those areas and add dirt to it one way that I can manipulate that is right now the only attribute that I have is hardness I probably want to have a little bit. All right, now what I can do is go down to its height range, or its height position, I mean. And if I start messing with this, see, I'm pulling it up out of those areas so that it's like filling the cavity of that rock. And then one more step I could do. So I could use a linear gradient to only to mask it up to its its a kind of anchor point, and I want a three D. Go to that height again, and then I'm going to set that to pass through. I want I don't want it to break the silhouette of the rock too much. Actually, instead of that, take your mask and put it into a new folder because I want to mess with the uh, how that mixes a little bit. I want that line to be a little bit irregular. And you know what? We could actually warp that edge. By custom noise and use the big shape. All right, so now you can use this linear gradient, increase or decrease for that dirt. All right, so I'm gonna finish. This is my first rock, and I'm just gonna go ahead and do the same process for all the other ones, and then we'll move on to the ground plane in the next video. All right, so that's it for this one. Uh, please like, comment, subscribe, hit that bell for notifications. I look forward to doing this series with you guys and uh, kind of exploring uh, different techniques. So uh, thanks for watching.